In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week I told you about the prophecy of Nathan to David concerning uh, Bathsheba and uh, the fact that David had raped Bathsheba and, and murdered Uriah the Hittite. Um, and that this led to a series of events which ended up with Absalom, his son, uh, t trying to take control of the kingdom and attacking Jerusalem so that David has to flee. The result, as a result of that, David fights back. He has to fight a battle, a massive battle, against Absalom, his son. Now what's happened is this. Absalom had a counsellor uh, and he was a very shrewd man and what he said to Absalom was, David is running scared, you need to go and send a fast group of uh, troops just to go and get David now, quickly, before he gets too far away. And David undermines that advice by getting one of his counsellors to stay behind and pretend to be loyal to Absalom. And his advice is, no, don't go now, um, gather everybody together and we'll have one big battle in order to sort it out. And that's the advice that Absalom goes with to have a big battle. Uh, and this battle takes place uh, across the other side of the Jordan in what is now the Kingdom of Jordan. And all the armies are lined up. Um, but unusually, the army generals say to David, you cannot come into this battle because we know that the only person that Absalom wants to get is you. And so they say to David, you must stay here while we go to the battle. And I think they were quite shrewd there because because what David is trying to do is win the battle but not kill his son. Um, he's, he's not a very good father, isn't David? We heard last week about how his children uh, behaved so badly. Uh, and David himself does not discipline them in, a, in an appropriate way. So he's proved himself to be a really poor father figure. Um, and even now, when he's trying to fight back against Absalom, he's also trying to, 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 to sort of make it more difficult for his generals to protect him. Um, and so he sends them off and says, look, you know, be gentle with him, be gentle with him. What actually happens is there's a massive battle uh, and Absalom gets caught. Uh, he's riding on a donkey uh, and in some rather amusing way, I think, he gets caught in the branches of a tree and he's stuck in this tree, can't get out. Uh, and some of the soldiers say, look, we saw Absalom hanging out in this tree uh, and, uh, and he's there. Uh, and one of the army commanders, uh, who's actually Joab, uh, uh, David's uncle, says, um, well, you know, why didn't you kill him? And the soldier said, well, we heard David say to you, go easy on him. So we didn't. Uh, and we knew that, you know, if we had killed him, you'd, have, you'd got angry with us and you wouldn't have batted an eyelid. But Joab then said, well, I, I'm, I'm not going to talk to you about this. Uh, I, I'm going to go and sort it out myself. And Joab kills him um, uh, and, and throws him in a pit. They then send the messengers back to David uh, in order to let him know that the battle's been won uh, and that, that Absalom is dead. David's response to this is to mourn very deeply for his son. And what father wouldn't? Um, you, know, you would mourn deeply if, you, if your son had died. Um, but the army commanders make it very clear that they've just risked their lives to save the king. And so David does as he's told and comes down and thanks the army for what they've done for him, even though he is grieving for his son. All of this is a very human story and it's told in beautiful language. Um, and it's, it's, it's a story which shows us the consequences of David's sin, because as we heard last week, Absalom's rebellion, according to Nathan, was in response to David's rape and murder. So what's going on here is a bigger picture beneath the humanity. 
God is working his purposes out through the shenanigans of David's family life, through his sin, through his battle prowess, through the politics with his generals, that God is using all these different things to, to bring about a stable kingdom. And we heard a few weeks back about just how stable that kingdom had been, the house of David, and went on for hundreds of years. So i leave those thoughts with you today. Um, David's life is not a palatable story. Uh, it's one that gives us lots of bad examples about how to behave. But it does reveal the grace of God in what was a very violent and unpleasant world. Um, and so when we look at our own world and we see uh, ill behaviour and violence and so on, we can maybe stop and take stock and say well actually if God could have worked with those dreadful things that David did and with all those awful violent times in which he lived maybe God can work in our times as well so I thank God for David even though he was such a flawed character I thank God for his children even though they suffered from having a dreadful father and also you know, behaved really very badly themselves but I thank God for them because they show us how God can work in all of our lives, good or bad, uh, and that he works for good and for the good of everybody in his own ways. Amen.